Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to go over that how you can separate out your navigation from your view. Now, we all have written code like this. You can see that our navigation is directly inside the view. You see the navigation link? Yep, that takes you to the details view. Let me go ahead and run the application. And you can see that I can click on any of these list items and go to a different screen. This is a very basic kind of interface and you have already created these kind of interfaces in when you are developing applications. Now, what is the problem with this? A problem which is a bit of a problem is we have navigation right inside the view. So if we want to change the navigation, maybe now this doesn't go to the detail view, but somewhere else, we will have to go and basically go through the whole view and change it. What can we do to accommodate this? Well, we can create the navigation structure outside the view. Now, what I'm about to show you is a very, very at a basic level. I don't really want you to go in your code, into your existing code and start changing all of this stuff. This is more of an experiment. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, all of these features that putting the navigation outside of the view, they're already available in React using React Router DOM or React Router and even also on the Flutter framework. So hopefully these features will actually come to the iOS world, maybe in the future. So we'll start with creating a particular route. So I'm just gonna go over here and I will say a route. It's a simple enum that defines different kinds of routes that we can have in our application. The first route I'm gonna go ahead and build will be called the detail route or the detail view. You can simply call it detail and we're going to go ahead and pass in the string, which is going to be the same exact route that we have built right over here. But who is going to be managing all these routes? Well, that will be the job of a navigator. So let's go ahead and create a navigator. So I'm going to go ahead and start a navigator. And inside the navigator, I'm going to go ahead and create a static function and I will call it navigate. This function is going to return a particular view from the content, which you're going to see in a moment. This is also going to take in a route and it is going to take in a content. Now this content basically dictates that what kind of a button that you're clicking, what kind of a label, what kind of a display you have. And it is going to return you any view. Now, Let's go ahead and try to implement what goes inside the navigate function. Now over here, you can see we already have a couple of issues going on. We're saying expected generic is not used and blah, blah, blah. We still have to use it obviously. So let's go ahead and perform a switch on the route. And we can do that because our route is an enum. Go ahead and see if we can find a little bit more space. Actually, that should be okay. Maybe space over here. There we go. So if we have a case where it is a detail and we are getting a particular detail, probably some sort of an animal is being passed, then we can return any view. And inside the any view, we can go ahead and wrap up navigation link. And we can tell the navigation link where is the destination and what is the label. Well, we already know the destination. We know that it's going to go to the detail view and we're going to pass in the animal. And the label is whatever it appears. So we technically don't need this at this point. We actually do have the content that is going to dictate the label. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are adding the content, which is the content which is passed to you. That's the stuff that you're passing. So we'll simply go ahead over here and say content. All right, let's go ahead and see. Most probably I'm doing some mistake over here. Content uh, is not like that. Let's go ahead and fix it. 
content is a parameter or a variable. There we go. Okay. So we have created our first route, which is going to navigate to a detailed view. And you can see that all of this is outside the actual view. So how would the view actually uses it? Let's go ahead and come into play and we'll go over here to our list. And instead of using the navigation link, we will go ahead and use the navigator. So navigator dot navigate to a particular route, which is detail passing in the animal and whatever content that we want to display. So this is for visibility purposes, or this is for like whatever content that the person will actually see. And in this case, it will be returning the content, which is the, or the view, which is the actual animal in a text label. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works or not. So now I can click on a cat and a mouse, and you can see the navigation actually works. And all the part of the navigation, the actual navigation is inside the navigator. So if somebody decided, if we are using this navigation and somebody decided that, well, when you click on the detail, now you're gonna to go to some other view. Well, we have only one place to edit and all the other different views that were using this particular route, they will automatically be updated and we will be able to pass this around. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example of how we can use a different view. We have another view called about us. It simply says about us and that's pretty much it. So if you want to go to that view, we will have to go and create a route for it. So let's go ahead and create a route for about us view. So about us, let's go ahead and see. First, we will go to the route and we will add that route about us. Then we will go to the actual navigate function and we will make sure that we are using that about us. There we go. And now we can go ahead and return any view, passing in the navigation link, navigation link. And the same thing we're going to do what we did last time. We're going to be passing the destination, which in this case is about us view and some sort of a label, which in our case will be the content which the user will be passing. So let's go ahead and remove most of this stuff. And I believe over here, we can use that and we can simply call content. Okay, so that part is done. Now we can move on to the actual view and we can look into that how would you go to that page? So we are inside a vertical stack I can go over here and I can add a button. I found that when you are using the navigator to navigate, you have to add the button in a very different way. So in this case, we are going to be adding a button which takes in the action and the label. Inside the label, I'm gonna go ahead and call the navigator dot navigate to the about us route and a particular content. Because we do have to return some sort of a content. So I'm gonna go ahead and say text and it will say go to about us view. Let's go ahead and refresh our preview. So now you can see that we have on the top part, we have all of that stuff going on. And in the bottom part, we can go to the about us view. Now make sure that you also understand that this all works that because we have placed everything inside the navigation view. Without the navigation view, you will not be able to go and push different stacks or push different things onto the navigation. So make sure that you have that also. So this was a very quick example of how you can move the navigation outside of the view itself. And hopefully in the future versions of Swift UI, we will have some sort of a React router DOM, but for Swift UI re router DOM uh, introduced, where we can push all of this navigation into a completely separate configuration file, some sort of a provider, and that provider will be maintaining all the different routes. But for now, you can use or you can inspire from the code that we have written. It is possible, but you can see it's very, very uh, at the early stages. 
I would not go right now and use this technique in my app uh, unless it's a very small app because this obviously requires a lot of work. But hopefully it will give you an idea of how things can be done. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you want to support my videos and support my work, then perhaps you will be interested in becoming a patron. Simply go to patreon.com slash azamsharp and check out two different tiers of becoming a patron, a silver tier and a gold tier. Each tier is different and silver tier is going to give you access to the video while the gold tier is going to give you access to the video, publications and also discounts on books and uh, future courses. So if you do find these videos to be helpful, your support will be very, very appreciated. Also, take a look at the YouTube description where you can find the links to my courses. And uh, if you're interested in those, go ahead and click on the link and get the courses. That really helps me a lot to move forward and creating these videos. Thank you so much and hope you have a great day.